in the idea of learning how to create the realities you wish to create, in the way you wish these realities to be. It is all about the process of learning how to be in love, how to identify with that vibratory fundamental basic out of which you create everything anyway. Bashar the key is finding a means to maintain a loving state of being. The more we refocused on love, the more we feel and get love in our life. Life is the result of love, therefore in order to survive we need love. When we begin to shed ourselves from love, we start to develop disharmony in many areas of our life. Love helps maintain the equilibrium that is crucial in living a peaceful and joyous life. When we close our hearts from love, conflict and lack of peace will persist. Our consciousness is what attracts peace into our lives. This ISN T isolated solely to the mental world, because consciousness incorporates all aspects of our being. Our consciousness has mental, emotional, spiritual and physical aspects all interwoven as one. These aspects all need to be addressed in order for love to reign supreme. We cannot embody love to it. As fullest if we done. T work to maintain equilibrium in all aspects of our life. Attention should be invested in all these areas of our being and work to better oneself, but understand they all work as one. For example, when you become frustrated your body tenses up as a result of some kind of mental attachment you're identifying with. In order to become frustrated you have to have some kind of desire, otherwise you w-o-u-l-d-n t be upset. This is a perfect example of mental, emotional, physical and spiritual. It is mental in the sense that an idea, attachment, caused the emotional surge which caused the physical symptoms. You may be wondering what the spiritual aspect of this is. Well that, as determined by your state of being, which can really only be one of two things, either negative or positive. So the spiritual aspect represents the overall theme of the experience. With the example we just went over, it would be negative. But this overall reality is not simply that as the way it is, it is the background you create by surrounding the primary belief structure you have with similar belief structures so that you can create a gradation, a variation of beliefs to expand outward from you in order to create a backdrop against which to see the primary belief of your life, the primary focus of your life. Bashar our primary belief creates our reality. Everything is formed around the basic beliefs we hold for reality. So when one believes life is hard, Life will conform to this primary belief and create many sub-level beliefs that support this notion. These beliefs keep breaking down into smaller and smaller ones the longer you hold on to this primary belief. Thus after a while the primary belief is supported by many others ones. A analogy I like to use is to consider your beliefs like a tree. Your primary belief is the trunk of the tree and the branches are the sub-level beliefs. The longer you hold on to a particular primary belief, the bigger the tree gets. The sooner you recognize your primary beliefs the more able you will be to change your current life as direction. When you redefine your basic belief into one what you would prefer, change happens immediately. The only thing that needs to be done is to be that change, to believe in it and act as if you already are that change, because you are the change already. Nothing needs to come into manifestation for this to be true. When you see yourself as being both the cause and effect, everything comes into alignment. Everything changes when you change anything. Bashar when we start to recognize that every change we make changes everything. We come to the realization that our change already exists. The need to see this change in our external world can be an obstacle to many of us. We want to see in order to believe, but in reality we have it backwards. We need to believe in order to see. Thus when we believe that the change is real, then we shall see it. Even when you can T C it realizes that most of existence is unseen to us. We can only perceive a very small spectrum of colors. Thus there could be a change that was manifested that we are unaware of. When we realize that we are all the proof we need for the change, we realize we are the change. First sense the change within, then look around to see it in your environment. The truth is, any change you make you can see around you immediately. But first you have to be able to sense and identify it within you. That that's what I learned along my journey. When I started to see abundance all around me, then I started to be abundant. The thing I learned though was abundance was always surrounding me. It was just my old ways of interacting with reality that prevented me from seeing it. I had everything I needed, but yet I still wanted more. I was obsessed with the idea that I need to accumulate things in order to be worthy or happy. 
I thought love could be achieved through acquisition of power and wealth. When I started to be grateful for what I had and took the time to see abundance around me, my life slowly started to become abundant. Let yourselves know you are in a completely different locale. Everything has changed. Everything? Bashar whenever we change our primary beliefs, we shift to a different parallel reality that is conducive to this idea we re-embodying. That's right from the moment we made the change, everything changes. When we understand this we will recognize the fact that from the exact moment we decided to make a change the change occurred. When we see the moment of change as being both the cause and effect, then we are the change. It? It's just a matter of maintaining that state of being, in identifying the obstacles, opportunities, and transforming them into assets. When you make the change allow yourself to act in accordance to this change, because you are the change, the locale can be equated to the parallel reality that your consciousness is attracting. Each and every single second we are shifting between billions upon billions of parallel realities. That is what gives us the sense of movement, but in reality movement is illusion. What gives the illusion of movement is that each reality we shift to is so similar to the previous one that it creates the idea of movement. The truth though is that each reality is a still frame and we attract similar frames into our field of experience in order to experience continuity in our reality. This works like a film projector, where each frame is a still image. But when you cycle through the frames in a rapid manner you create the illusion of movement. The frequency of your consciousness determines what reality you will be inhabiting. So if you want to be in a reality conducive to your new belief, then act like you're already there. The only reason you appear to be different is because of the pitch, or vibrational rate, at which you operate, the level at which you define yourself to be. Bash are the differences we perceive in this reality are illusions. We ourselves are the universe. We are the whole universe, not a small part of it. When we see ourselves as being one with everyone on this planet we come to realize there is no separation. Everyone on this world is a reflection of that one humanity. We are all one people, one community, one world. So what is good for others is good for us. Thus we should all accept one another for who they are, which is why it is very important in this day and age to see all of humanity as one being, one community, one world. We see so much division in everyday life that it can create much dissent and confusion. But when we start to see us all as one, then concept of separation collapses. It matters not what nationality, gender, religion or creed you hail from. When you see another human being, you are seeing a reflection of yourself. So if you want to be treated with kindness, love and compassion, W-O-U-L-D-N? T it'd be logical to assume that doing that for others would be the same as doing that for yourself. Excitement is the representation of the flow. So you still know the river is flowing, follow it. Go down the channel it leads you on, for that represents the quickest path to the sea. Bashar find what makes your heart sing and life will align to your heart song. Whatever you are passionate about, pursue it. Life is too precious to waste your energy on things that done. T excites you. When I realized this I was astonished and I started to look for the things that excited me. But I see O-U-L-D-N? T find it at first. I was so indecisive when it came to what I wanted to do with my life. I considered many things, but none of them seemed to connect with me. That? As when an idea dawned upon me, the idea was this. Can I be excited with everything that I do, no matter what it is? That? As when I started to experiment with the idea, I first tried to become excited when it was time for my daily run, because I had this belief that it was hard and a burden. What I discovered was the longer I practiced being excited and positive about my runs the more I started to enjoy them. Then I realized all of life is exciting. My preferences as to what excites me are much more malleable than I previously believed. This opened up the whole new ballpark for me. It was from that moment on that I discovered I am in control of what excites me. I can retrain myself to be excited with stuff that I used to find boring or cumbersome. Everything being blank, empty, neutral allows you to extract from the circumstances the effects you desire by assigning to it the appropriate meaning. Bashar all of creation is neutral, there is no overlaying polarity to anything in existence. We are the definers, the ones who give polarity to existence for the purposes of exploration and self-discovery. When we realize everything is neutral, then the focus is directed towards the self. When we see that we are the ones assigning polarity to everything, 
then we can consciously choose to change the polarity of the ones we no longer prefer. For example, let us say you lost your documents needed for a lawsuit. You can T seem to find them and you V looked everywhere. The old you would react by getting upset, blaming others and becoming worried about where they are. Now that you Ray embodying the new idea though, you know that the circumstances polarity is left to your interpretation. Thus you accept what is undone to allow this to cause negative feelings. You're determined to use these circumstances for positivity and guess what? You end up finding some money you thought you lost. Later that day you find out that your lawyer took the papers. That? S-Y-E-C-O-U-L-D-N? T find it. Since you were able to keep a positive attitude about the circumstances you were able to find some money. Plus not get all worked up over something that I S-N? T really that big of a deal. Everything that happens in our life is defined by us, no exceptions. Everything you do, everything, everything, is an opportunity to decide what you prefer. Everything. You can learn from everything, Bashar when you see life is an opportunity for self-exploration into what you prefer. We can consciously decide that everything that happens in our field of experience is an opportunity for us to choose something positive. All of the circumstances we Ray experiencing and will experience our opportunities to decide what it is you prefer. Thus we can see that nothing has polarity, it really is neutral. That is when you realize that it is our responses to events and circumstances that determines it as polarity. The choose is yours at the end of the day. You can either perceive everything happening in your life as positive or negative. Which one do you prefer? Timothy Frappier Okay, so I've got to my maximum bench press and I'm trying to push it off. It's not going. You know, what do I do? What do I do? So I narrow my grip slightly. I'm going to drop the weights up one side. And that happens. <laughs> 